Hey everyone, welcome to Cooking Companion TV. I'm Jenna Edwards, and this is a recipe demo of mulled spice ice cream using goat milk. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. I use a custard base by warming eggs into the milk. I use a general ratio based on each cup of milk so I can make one or two or three cup recipes as needed. Over low heat, I'm warming three cups of goat milk with two whole eggs. Most recipes call for just the yolks and I end up wasting the whites, so I've started using whole eggs. The egg flavor is in the whites, so while you can use up to six yolks in a custard base, I wouldn't use more than two egg whites or two whole eggs, otherwise the ice cream will taste eggy. So use your discretion as to yolks versus whole eggs, but definitely never more than two whole eggs. I generally use one egg per cup of milk or two eggs for three cups of milk. Whisking them into the milk over low heat means I can temper in the eggs without cooking them. And I got this from SeriousEats.com. I'll link to that below. I use goat milk powder as the cream substitute. Goat milk proteins don't separate from their fat like cow milk does. It's one of the things that makes it more digestible. It also means for ice cream, we have to intensify the presence of milk proteins to up the fat content to get a creamy consistency. I use one tablespoon of goat milk powder per cup of milk. I also use a quarter cup of sugar per cup of milk. So I've measured out three fourths of a cup of raw sugar and it really, it looks like a lot. So I am using all but about two or three tablespoons because I don't want an overly sweet base for this flavor profile. So I'll keep whisking the eggs, the milk, the milk powder and sugar over low heat until the sugar is dissolved and the powder is mostly incorporated and until I no longer see those glops of egg whites. It's just like when you're whisking um, eggs for scrambled eggs. I still have clumps of powder and egg whites, so I'll keep the heat on low while I prep the ginger. Using a spoon, I'll scrape off the skin. I'm using a generous inch for this batch. Mulling spices can easily get a heavy like feeling on the palate, so I'll be generous with the ginger and the citrus to keep it light and bright. And I'll whisk the custard as often as I can to keep an eye on the custard. I decided to increase the heat to low medium and add in the spices. Starting with star anise, which has licorice flavor, I'll throw in one, one whole star with a few pieces. This flavor evolves throughout the cooking and cooling process, and to me, it's the wild card spice. I never taste licorice, but I'm sure it's affecting the other flavors in some way. Next, cardamom pods. Super aromatic, and I know I like it, so I'll be generous with it. I'm using at least eight pods. Next, cloves. Super duper aromatic and can easily overwhelm a mulling mixture, so I'm using just three of them. I'd say it's the heaviest of the spices in this whole combination. Ah, and now the cinnamon. Usually I'd say throw in one cinnamon stick, but I found a cassia spark, which comes from the cinnamon, cinnamon tree, but it's like the inside of the bark, I think, and it has a different profile from the bark itself. The stick of cinnamon will be spicy and edgy. This cassia spark is mellow and it's warm and it's best for mulling. Now for a few allspice berries, which is also known as Jamaican pepper, and several black peppercorns. The spice will help balance all of the warmth from the cinnamon and the cloves and the cardamom. And now for the orange. I'm using just the peel from one swipe of the circumference of the orange. You can slice an orange and throw in two or three of those slices and uh, you get just a little bit of the juice too. Citrus is integral to keeping it bright on the palate. Now more whisking to make sure the milk isn't scalding on the bottom of the pot. At one point, I think I let it simmer too strongly and now like my flat, my fat is like clumping up. It's fine, it turns into something smooth, but it just doesn't look too appetizing at this point but the custard texture is there. You can see that there's like a bunch of body in the mixture. One way you can test is to dip in a spoon. If you run your finger down the middle of the back, the custard should stand and it shouldn't run to fill in the gap that your fingertip created. Just a note, if you use a metal spoon, you'll burn your fingertip doing this, but you get the idea. If you want it thicker, let it simmer for longer. Now that I'm done with the custard, we have two more ingredients to add vanilla 
and alcohol should always be added after the cooking process. Otherwise, it gets bitter. So I'll use a spider spoon or a slotted spoon to scoop out the aromatics. My custard was too thick, believe it or not, for a fine mesh strainer. And I'm pushing through uh, any aromatic juice and the cream that's gathered on the pieces. And now I'm pouring in a quarter cup of spiced rum simply because I had it and I was curious to see how it would affect the texture. The alcohol is completely optional though although some whiskey would be nice here too. The science says it affects how ice crystals form and can contribute to a creamier consistency. Well, SeriousEats.com has a great blog post on using alcohol in ice cream for texture and flavor, and I'll link that with the ingredients so you can use your best discretion. I'm using a tiny bit of dehydrated vanilla to round out the flavors. I don't want to taste vanilla, but without it, the ice cream can taste flat. I'd use a quarter teaspoon of vanilla extract if you want. Now let this cool for at least four hours uh, in the fridge, and then we churn. I have the freezer bowl attachment to the KitchenAid stand mixer, which I think works really well. I'll turn it on low as I pour in the custard and bump it up to three or even four. I like to whip a lot of air into my ice cream. After 20 to 30 minutes, it's ready. This is a beautiful soft serve texture that can be used immediately, or you can let it sit in the freezer for a couple of hours to get that classic ice cream texture. You can't go wrong with either one. When I photographed the recipe, I didn't wait for the ice cream to harden. I used the soft serve texture so it melts ridiculously quickly. It's a glorious flavor that you don't expect. The warmth of the mulling spices tells you to expect a warm texture. You're used to a mulled wine, you know, or some baked good, but then you have the ice cream that's like, nope, I'm not hot. So I made homemade chocolate syrup just for the photograph, and I'll include the link to that recipe with the ingredients. I am super proud of this concoction. It's familiar and different. It's great alone, but I'm sure it would shine with a super dark chocolate tort or even a bitter orange marmalade tort. And I, tart, sorry, I have a glorious recipe for that, which I'm gonna link to. It may seem contradictory to make ice cream in cooler months, but there is some reasoning to it. We usually get stressed during the holidays and dairy is a soothing ingredient. So it's typical to crave dairy products when we're stressed out. It's like, it's like eating a hug. Also, we can feel dried out from the artificial heat during the winter time, and that can also make you crave ice cream from all the dryness. That's it for this recipe demo of mulled spice ice cream using goat milk. Get the ingredient list below or at cookingcompaniontv.com slash mulled ice cream. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it and subscribe to this channel for more demos just like this. I'm Jenna Edwards and thanks for watching.